In the previous video, we uh, purchased the Champion generator, 7,000 watt generator from Costco. Uh, then we struggled to get it out of the truck. And then we had a unboxing a la mode. Well, actually a la carte. And after which it was assembled. Now in this video, we're going to uh, go through and talk about a little uh, uh, the previous generator that we have, the Honda generator, and go into some testing on this Champion generator. Oh, before heading out of here, I wanted to uh, mention a uh, previous generator. It's the Honda 2000, 2000 watt, but it's only 110 output on this guy, so it's not the split phase 220. So that wouldn't work for for running our uh, our 220 volt pumps. Also, doesn't have enough power for the surge currents. So uh, it's a great generator, and we'll be you know have uses for it around here for sure. We actually bought it for our trailer when we used to go trailering. In fact, uh, I had set the trailer all up for boondocking with uh, batteries, inverters, you know the whole spiel. You know, got it all set up for all that and. Uh, I think we went out uh, after the first time with it, and uh, Mrs. R.H. decided that she didn't want to go anywhere that didn't have full hookups. <laughs> uh, that was kind of unfortunate. So, uh, so a lot of that work just was in vain. So, just wanted to uh, show that. This one's much more readily portable. Carry it along. And it, if you got some work to do out in the field, it's very handy to have. So I recommend this. The big generator is good for what big generators are good for, but not for everything. Okay, it is quite noisy. Anyone else? Yeah.
Well, it did, uh, did the job. I was actually, uh, I was miscalculating when I was thinking about it running the, uh, that water heater in there. Because <laughs> when I ran the water heater in there, the, the voltage coming off my lines is more like 220 volts. Well, this is actually 250 volts. So, uh, I need to calculate how many watts with the uh, 250 volts. Um, because certainly, you know, it's a resistive load in that water heater. Yeah, obviously, at 250 volts, it's going to draw a lot more current than 38 amps. So, uh, off the 220 volts, it was at eight, over 8, 000, a little over 8,000 watts, which this thing is 8,100 watts peak. So, and it, well, actually, that's that's peak when it's on gas. Uh, it's 9,000 peak, 7,000 running. So, the 8,000s above its normal running load, and since it's two, almost 250 volts, it was showing 247 volts. So, you know, it was obviously going to draw a lot more power than uh, than the 8,000. It was probably well over 9,000. And you saw that it, it actually held it for a minute. When I first turned it on, you hear, oh, it just couldn't sustain it. So if I was to keep it on, it, it died off the first time when I left it on there. So it finally shut itself off. So anyway, that was a pretty good test. And then uh, when I was running in there, I said lights, but uh, I put on the lights. I have uh, approximately 10 amps of the fluorescent lights, turned all those on. But then I ran two of the large burners on the stove. So, And then I used my clip ammeter to measure the current on that. And I was actually at uh, like 26 amps at... Uh, uh, this 250 volts so yeah we're getting up there I'll need to uh, I probably want to run some other tests I uh, would like to be sure that it does kick start the uh, the well pump I don't really suspect there will be a problem because uh, it, it seems to handle the overcurrent but I like to test it without anyway just don't know that I'm gonna do it today I don't know. All right, so we got some tests here. Hasta la projecto. Okay, I just stopped and restarted and uh, just watching the meter and listening. The wind will kick the water on. There it must go. There we go. Okay, we jumped up to 15 amps. You heard the bobble out there? Okay. That must be the down pump. I don't hear the other pump running. So that's the main well pump. So we're at 15.9 amps. Okay, so now that pump shut off. Back down to 7.8. Yeah, why did it shut off? I got that thing up. Right. Maybe this thing's so loud because usually it's the uh, pressure pump that turns on and off quickly. Maybe it's just that it's so loud out there I don't hear the pressure pump coming on. I did turn on some more lights and we're back to 10.8 amps, but uh, yeah, it was definitely the pressure pump that it kicked on because uh, I uh, saw the pressure in there was at 50 pounds, which is usually the, the, what it loads it up to. When it fills it up, the highest pressure is 50, and then it drops it down around 35, for, I believe, before it kicks back on again. Yeah, I really want to see that down pump kick in. You know, it's like I always tell people, you, can, you can't say that something works until you tested it. So, uh, 
I don't want to just assume this thing's going to run that pump. I don't, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't, but... Okay, 18.9, yeah, so we are running the well pump. Yay, it does work. Yeah, that was it, the, uh, the head of the sensor, it's got a wire coming off the back. Yeah, okay, you're still on. So one of the sensors sitting in the water, like this, down, and there's the water level. Well, actually, excuse me, it's sitting on top of the water like this, and, uh, if the water level gets down too low, then the, the thing is sitting straight down. It's like suspended. So uh, I need to, to bring it up where it was hanging down again. So I need to hold up on that wire and let it hang down. I was pulling it up like this before, and apparently didn't like that. So yeah, instead of being out at an angle like this, it had to go where it was hanging down. So that should continue to, to draw there. So that's a good test, and I've got the other lights on. That didn't bobble too badly. So that's all the testing I needed on this. I'm going to go ahead and start to start shutting things down. First I'll go disconnect the, uh, the arrangement I've got on the pump. I'll let this thing continue running. But I'll sign off. Hasta la projecto. So we saw here, you know, running it through all the tests that the champion generator performed like a champ. Uh, was able to power the loads, um, even powered a, a load that was well beyond its limits for a so many seconds before it started to cut out. You know, five, six seconds. More than I expected for a, uh, you know, it's only meant to be able to handle that for a very short period of time. So anyhow, it uh, handled very low, very well. Um, loads well exceeding 7,000 and actually over the 9,000 uh, peak it was rated at. Uh, I, I do want to adjust the voltage on it. I notice it's putting on 250 volts, which is well beyond my line voltage here. And there's really no need to have it up to that. Uh, I'd want to have it at 240 volts, and there is an adjustment in there for it, so uh, we'll adjust that. Um, that brings me to the point, when you're getting a generator, uh, one of the things you want to think about efficiency. You know, you think about what the maximum load is. Now here, I had to have a 220 volt generator, because uh, I have, have a 220 volt well pump that I have to power, and it has a very high peak load, so I needed something with uh, you know, a fairly high power output, like around the seven to 9,000 watts. Um, if I had gone with a larger generator, 20 kilowatt or something, um, can you couple that into your load? The thing is expending 20 kilowatts worth of gasoline, but when you connect it up to charge your batteries, your battery charger can only use 10 kilowatts, well, you're really wasting half of it. Um, the other problem gets to be if you're you know, near the end times, let's say you're just running loads, you're not even charging batteries and you're burning at 20 kilowatts. You're burning a lot of gas for you know, very little result. So kind of got to think about that. Um, the champion generator is really good. Uh, I'd say careful of, of what your needs are. Uh, think about the scenarios. You know, when are you going to use it? Uh, what's most important to you? Make your decisions based on that. Anyhow, uh, we'll get back to some projects here. Ostali Projecto. All right, signing off. You know how rude of me. I, you know, I didn't, you know, introduce the Chow Chow that's sitting right here. Hey, China. I know you're shy. I know you're shy. Here. Oh boy, here wiggle worm. Yeah, she's a hairless sphinx. She uh, likes to hang around us and uh, needs lots of attention. So she often likes to sit here next to my desk and... Yeah, she's a great cat. Her name's China. 
see you around some other videos. See you later.